acid and a zinc electrode. Dot 12. These wet cells used liquid electrolytes, which were prone to leakage and spillage if not handled correctly. Dot many used glass jars to hold their components, which made them fragile and potentially dangerous. These are characteristics made wet cells unsuitable for portable appliances. Near the end of the 19th century, the invention of dry cell batteries, which replaced the liquid electrolyte with a paste, made portable electrical devices practical. 13. Batteries in vacuum tubes historically used a wet cell for the A battery, to provide power to the filament, and a dry cell for the B battery, to provide the plate voltage. Future. Between 2010 and 2018, annual battery demand grew by 30%, reaching a total of 180 GWh in 2018. Conservatively, the growth rate is expected to be maintained at an estimated 25%, culminating in demand reaching 2,600 GWh in 2030. In addition, Cost reductions are expected to further increase the demand to as much as 3,562 GWh. 14. Important reasons for this high rate of growth of the electric battery industry include the electrification of transport, 14, and large scale deployment in electricity grids, 14, supported by anthropogenic climate change driven moves away from fossil fuel combusted energy sources to cleaner, renewable sources, and more stringent emission regimes. Distributed electric batteries, such as those used in battery electric vehicles, vehicle to grid, and in home energy storage, with smart metering and that are connected to smart grids for demand response are active participants in smart power supply grids. 15. New methods of reuse, such as echelon use of partly user batteries, add to the overall utility of electric batteries, reduce energy storage costs, and also reduce pollution forward slash emission impacts due to longer lives. In echelon use of batteries, Vehicle electric batteries path of their battery capacity reduced to less than 80%, usually after service of 5-8 years, are repurposed for us as backup supply or for renewable energy storage systems. 16. Grid scale energy storage envisages the large scale use of batteries to collect and store energy from the grid or a power plant and then discharge that energy at a later time to provide electricity or other grid services when needed. Grid scale energy storage, either turnkey or distributed, are important components of smart power supply grids. 17. Chemistry and principles. Batteries convert chemical energy directly to electrical energy. In many cases, the electrical energy release seed is the difference in the cohesive, 18, or bond energies of the metals oxides, or molecules undergoing the electrochemical reaction. 3. For instance, energy can be stored in Zn or Li, which are high energy metals. A voltaic cell for demonstration purposes. In this example the two half cells are linked by a salt bridge that permits the transfer of ions. Because they are not stabilized by d-electron bonding, unlike transition metals. Batteries are designed so that the energetically favorable redox reaction can occur only when electrons move through the external part of the circuit. A battery consists of some number of voltaic cells. Each cell consists of two half cells connected in series by a conductive electrolyte containing metal cations. One half cell includes each electrolyte and the negative electrode, the electrode to which onions negatively charged ions, migrate. The other half cell include each electrolyte and the positive electrode, to which cations, positive like charged ions, migrate. Cations are reduced, electrons are added, at the cathode, while metal atoms are oxidized, electrons are re-removed, at the anode. 19. Some cells use different electrolytes for each half cell. 
then a separator is used to prevent mixing of the electrolytes while allowing ions to flow between half cells to complete the electrical circuit. Each half cell has an electromotive force, m measured in volts, relative to a standard. The net m of the cell is the difference between the m of its half cells. 20. Thus, if the electrodes have m and then the net m is, in other words, the net m is the difference between the reduction potentials of the half reactions. 21. The electrical driving force or across the terminals of a cell is known as the terminal voltage difference and is measured in volts. 22. The terminal voltage of a cell that is neither charging nor discharging is called the open circuit voltage and equals the m of the cell. Because of internal assistance, 23. The terminal voltage of a cell that is discharging is smaller in magnitude than the open circuit voltage and the terminal voltage of a cell that is charging exceeds the open circuit voltage. 24. An ideal cell has negligible internal resistance, so it would maintain a constant terminal voltage of until exhausted, then dropping to zero. If such a cell maintained 1.5 volts and produce a charge of 1 kilom then on complete discharge it would have performed 1.5 joules of work. 22. In actual cells, the internal resistance increases under discharge. 23. And the open circuit voltage also decreases under discharge. If the voltage and assistance are plotted against time, the resulting graphs typically are a curve. The shape of the curve varies according to the chemistry and internal arrangement employed. The voltage developed across a cell's terminals depends on the energy release of the chemical reactions of its electrodes and electrolyte. Alkaline and zinc carbon cells have different chemistries, but approximately the same m of 1.5 volts. Likewise, NACD and NMH cells have different chemistries but approximately the same m of 1.2 volts. 25. The high electrochemical potential changes in the reactions of lithium compounds give lithium cells m of 3 volts or more. 26. Almost any liquid or moist object that has enough ions to be electrically conductive can serve as the electrolyte for a cell. As a novelty or science demonstration, it is possible to insert two electrodes made of different metals into a lemon, 27, potato, 28, etc. and generate small amounts of electricity. A voltaic pile can be made from two coins, such as a nickel and a penny, and a piece of paper towel dipped in salt water. Such a pile generates a very low voltage but, when many are stacked in series, they can't replace normal batteries for a short time. 29. Types Primary and secondary batteries From top to bottom, a large 4.5 volt 3R12 battery, a D cell, a C cell, an AA cell, an AAA cell, an AAA cell, and a 23 battery, a 9 volt PP3 battery, and a pair of buttonsils. CR2032 and LR44 batteries are classified into primary and secondary forms. Primary batteries are designed to be used until exhausted energy then discarded. Their chemical reactions are generally not reversible, so they cannot be recharged. When the supply of reactants in the battery is exhausted, the battery stops producing current and is useless. 30. Secondary batteries can be recharged, that is, they can have other chemical reactions reversed by applying electric current to the cell. This regenerates the original chemical reactants, so they can be used, recharged, and used again multiple times. 31. Some types of primary batteries used, for example, for telegraph circuits were restored to operation by replacing the electrodes. 32. Secondary batteries are not indefinitely rechargeable due to dissipation of the active materials, loss of electrolyte and internal corrosion. Primary batteries, or primary cells, can produce current immediately in assembly. 
These are most commonly used in portable devices that have low current drain, are used only intermittently, or are used well away from an alternative power source, such as in alarm and communication circuits where other electric power is only intermittently available. Disposable primary cells cannot be reliably recharged since the chemical reactions arena easily reversible and active materials may not return to their original forms. Battery manufacturers recommend against attempting to recharge at primary cells. 33. In general, these have higher energy densities than rechargeable batteries. 34. But disposable batteries do not fare well under high drain applications with loads under 75 ohms. 75 omega. Common types of disposable batteries include zinc carbon batteries and alkaline batteries. Secondary batteries, also known as secondary cells, or rechargeable batteries, must be charged before first use. They are usually assembled with active materials in the discharged state. Rechargeable batteries are recharged by applying electric current which reverses the chemical reactions that occur during discharge forward slash use. Devices to supply the appropriate air current are called chargers. The oldest form of rechargeable battery is the lad acid battery, which are widely used in automotive and boating applications. This technology contains liquid electrolyte in an unsealed container requiring that the battery be kept upright and the area be well ventilated to ensure safe dispersal of the hydrogen gas it produces during GOVA charging. The lead acid battery is relatively heavy for the amount of electrical energy it can supply. Its low manufacturing cost and its high surge current levels make it common where its capacity, over approximately 10 R, is more important than weight and handling issues. A common application is the modern car battery, which can, in general, deliver a peak current of 450 amperes. Composition. Line up drawing of a dry cell, one brass cap, two plastic seal, three expansion space, four dot porous cardboard, five zincon, six carbon rod, seven dot chemical mixture. Many types of electrochemical cells have been produced with varying chemical processes and designs, including galvanic cells, electrolytic cells, fuel cells, flow cells and voltaic piles. 35. A wet cell battery has a liquid electrolyte. Other names are flooded cell since the liquid covers all internal parts or vented cell, since gases produced during operation can escape to the air. Wet cells were a precursor to dry cells and are commonly used as a learning tool for electrochemistry. They can't be built with common laboratory supplies, such as beakers, for demonstrations of how electrochemical cells work. A particular type of wet cell known as a concentration cell is important in understanding corrosion. Wet cells may be primary cells, non-rechargeable, or secondary cells, rechargeable. Originally, all practical primary batteries such as the Daniel cell were built as open-top glass jar wet cells. Other primary wet cells are either Clange cell, Grove cell, Bunsen cell, Chromic acid cell, Clark cell and Western cell. The Leclanche cell chemistry was adapted to the first dry cells. Wet cells are still used in automobile batteries and in industry for standby power for switchgear telecommunication or large uninterruptible power supplies, but in many places batteries with gel cells have been used instead. These applications commonly use lead acid or nickel cadmium cells. Molten salt batteries are primary or secondary batteries that use a molten salt as electrolyte. They operate at high temperatures and must be well insulated to retain heat. A dry cell uses a paste electrolyte with only enough moisture to allow current to flow. Unlike a wet cell, a dry cell can operate in any orientation without spilling, as it contains no free liquid, making it suitable for portable equipment. By comparison, 
The first web cells were typically fragile glass containers with lead rod shanging from the open top and needed careful handling to avoid spillage. Lead acid batteries did note to keep the safety and portability of the dry cell until the development of the gel battery. A common dry cell is the zinc carbon battery, sometimes called the dry Leclanche cell, with a nominal voltage of 1.5 volts the same as the alkaline battery, since both use the same zinc manganese dioxide combination. A standard dry cell comprises a zinc anode, usually in the form of a cylindrical pot, with a carbon cathode in the form of a central rod. The electrolyte is ammonium chloride in the form of a paste next to the zinc anode. The remaining space between the electrolyte and carbon cathode is taken up by a second paste consisting of ammonium chloride and manganese dioxide, the latter acting as a depolarizer. In some designs, the ammonium chloride is replaced by zinc chloride. A reserve battery can be stored unassembled, unactivated and supplying no power for a long period, perhaps years. When the battery is needed, then it is assembled, for example, by adding electrolyte, once it's assembled, the battery is charged and ready to work. For example, a battery for an electronic artillery fuse might be activated by the impact of firing a gun. The acceleration breaks a capsule of electrolyte that activates the battery and powers the fuse circuits. Reserve batteries are usually designed for a short service life, seconds or minutes, after long storage, years. A water-activated battery for oceanographic instruments or military applications becomes activated on immersion in water. On the 28th of February, 2017, the University of Texas at Austin issued a press release about a new type of solid-state battery developed by a team led by lithium-ion battery inventor John Goodenough, that could lead to safer, faster charging, longer-lasting rechargeable batteries for handheld mobile devices, electric cars and stationary energy storage. 36. The solid-state battery is also said to have three times the energy density increasing its useful life in electric vehicles, for example, it should also be more ecologically sound since Earth technology uses less expensive, Earth-friendly materials such as sodium extracted from seawater. Fuels who have much longer life. 37. Sony has developed a biological battery that generates electricity from sugar in a way that is similar to the processes observed in living organisms. The battery generates electricity through the use of enzymes that break down carbohydrates. 38. The sealed valve regulated lead acid battery, VRLA battery, is popular in the automotive industry as a replacement for the lead acid wet cell. The VRLA battery uses an immobilized sulfuric acid electrolyte reducing the chance of leakage and extending shelf life. 39. VRLA batteries immobilize the electrolyte. The two types are gel batteries, or gel cell, use a semi-solid electrolyte. Absorbed glass mat, AGM, batteries absorb the electrolyte in a special fiberglass matting. Other portable rechargeable batteries include several sealed dry cell types, that are useful in applications such as mobile phones and laptop computers. Cells of this type, in order of increasing power density and cost, include nickel cadmium, NiCD, nickel zinc, NiZN, nickel metal hydride, NiMH, and lithium ion, Li ion, cells. Li ion has by far the highest share of the dry cell rechargeable market. NiMH has replaced nic in most applications due to its higher capacity. But the CD remains in use in power tools, two while you're a and medical equipment. In the 2000s, developments include batteries with embedded electronics such as USPSL, which allows charging an AA battery through a USB connector, nanoball batteries that allow for a discharge rate about 100x greater than current batteries, 
and smart battery packs with state of charge monitors and battery protection circuits that prevent damage on over discharge low self discharge lsd allows second dry cells to be charged prior to shipping dot lithium sulfur batteries were used on the longest and highest solar powered flight dot 40 consumer and industrial grades batteries of all types are manufactured in consumer and industrial grades costlier industrial grade battery as may use